I have a quote for you. Are there, are there any self-righteous people outside of church? That's a good question. What do you think? Yay? Yay, nay? Man, I get hit by them all the time. Um, you know, I know people that would not step into this building because they believe that they are actually better than you Christians. They've judged you judgmental. I think that I put that on my Facebook this week. Um, they think you're hypocrites and, and all that great stuff. I, uh, I was one of them for so many years when I was an atheist. I thought Christians were, um, well, I didn't think you were all that great. And come to find out after I become one, we're not. We're sinners. We'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, let me, here's a quote for you, and then I'll talk about, I, I do want you in Luke 5. Luke 5, as I give you this quote, this is Pastor Charles, Charles Allen, and he was a um, Methodist pastor way back when. Um, I found this quote interesting. He said, the hardest people to reach with the love of God are not the bad people. They know they are bad. They have no defense. The hardest ones to win for God are the self righteous people that is if you think that your poop doesn't stink or what's the other word awful, awful? Awful. awful if you think that your awful does not stink uh you're not very likely to seek health right you are not very likely to come to church you're probably not very likely to seek God you definitely don't need a savior if you are not lost so I I, I agree with that but I want to talk to you today about self-righteous people in the church self-righteous people in the church do you think that's possible Self-righteous people in the church. I had this really cool picture, and I didn't bring. Um, it, it has a picture of a lamb, okay, a beautiful sheep, but they, they photoshopped it to where there was wolves' teeth just snarling through. It was a beautiful picture. You would have all enjoyed it. You'll have to come to my house. I'll show it to you. Jesus says, watch out for sheep in wolves' clothing. They will infect you you they will come into a a church setting and they would they'll attract people like them and before you know it a church which is supposed to practice grace and we'll get to grace in a second will eventually turn into a congregation of self-righteous judgmental people so we are to watch them here is something i've always struggled with and i want you to quickly help me how is it because later on it in, um, I believe it's Matthew 7, I know it's there, Jesus says this, he says, you will know self-righteous people, you'll know uh, wolves that are in sheep clothing by their, what? Rhymes with root. Fruit! Very good, you know your Bible. Somebody give her a, pro you, here, I got something for you. You get a hug? You want a halls? Can I have one? Thank you. You want some applesauce? Because we have some. Unsweetened. I'm on a diet. Every food I think about is just... How many calories are in a half? Five? Are you telling me the truth? This is a diet, Halls. Okay. If... How is it you're supposed to identify a self-righteous person, a wolf in sheep clothing, if they have sheep's clothing on them? I mean, you can't, you can't really judge them by their moral behavior, can you? I mean, won't they try to look the part? They won't cuss, won't chew, won't date girls that do. I used to chew back in the day. I did, I've had these bottles. I, I, let me tell you a story about Kyle. I, I used to chew Copenhagen, and I would spit in the bottles, and then I would leave them around the house. This is in my Marine Corps days. One time, Kyle, he's just a little boy. He came up, and he saw a soda pop, and he's like, I normally don't get soda pop. I'm going to take a big old swig. And he took that pop, that pop bottle and he goes, uh, 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 uh. and he set it down. 
And I think he looked at his mama with them eyes. Mama, I'm going to die, ain't I? (laughs) (laughs) To this day, the boy, every time he picks up a soda, he does this. Is this good? (laughs) No one's dad hasn't been around. That's not in my notes. That's from God. So I don't know. I was just, I guess I was telling on myself. Um, How do you identify somebody who is who is a wolf in sheep's clothing, a person who is self-righteous by, I mean, their outward appearance. Jesus says you'll know them by their fruits, right? So how? Well, I want you to go to Luke chapter 5, and you're already there. I'm going to read verse um, 33 here in a second. But before you, before you do, I'm going to give you the first thing that I, I think that you can, first way I think that you can identify somebody who is, is possibly as, as self-righteousness and not necessarily somebody who is um, godly. I think that there's a difference between being godly and self-righteous. Here's the first thing that comes to my mind. I believe that a self-righteous person does not understand grace. They don't understand it. Can they define it? Yes, they can define grace. Somebody give me a definition of grace other than these people. Does anyone know? Grace is what? An undeserved forgiveness. Forgiveness can be that, but let's generalize it. Undeserved gift. If I had a $50 bill in my pocket, and I'm not going to do this as an illustration because I'm sure my $50 bill wouldn't come back, and I gave it to this young man. This young man's pretty awesome, but he doesn't deserve 50 bucks from me, okay? I love you, but you're not 50 bucks love you. You may be a five buck love you, but not a $50 love you. And I gave this man 50 bucks, and I walked away and said, no, 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 it's for you. That's called grace. He didn't deserve that. You know what mercy is, right? What's mercy? That's kind, it's kind of like grace. Anybody know what mercy is? It's a hospital? What, what, what? Say it like you're dancing. You deserve punishment, but I'm not going to punish you. Right. It is not getting what you should get. Connor Jenkins, my littlest boy, is God's gift to me by grace, but it is an illustration. He is an illustration of God's mercy for me. He is. Because he deserves to be punished quite often. But many, many times I relent because I love him, and I want to see him grow up. And I think God's like that with me. I mess up a lot of times. You know, one time I was talking about you in Copenhagen in church. Can you believe that? (laughs) And I deserve to be punished. So a a self-righteous person can define grace. They can define mercy, but they don't understand it. Last week we looked at that. Do you remember um, Jesus... A little background on the, on, on the text that we're about to open up for real quick. The background was you had the Pharisees. So Jesus, he's, he, in Luke chapter 5, he calls the disciples. Then he calls the, um, he, he calls who? Give me one. Leper. Who else does he call? Who else? Leave out the tax collector. Then they have a party. They all bring the tax collector, gets all his tax collector. And tax collectors were sinners, man. Nobody Back then, it's not like our tax people today. They didn't like their tax people. Anyway, John, I know. John had a sermon that was called, I Love Tax Day. I remember that sermon. Gave me nightmares. Anyway, he had a party. And Jesus was there eating and drinking with all of the sinners, with all of the tax collectors, and the Pharisees walked by him, and, and, and they probably, they, they had beards back then, like, kind of like John, and, and, and they probably held their beard like that, and, and, and then they asked the question, why are you eating with sinners? Back then, eating and drinking with sinners was, was kind of like an intimate thing. It's, it's like this. It's like sharing a soda pop with somebody you love, Right? Only Andrew and I love each other. So Andrew would, after I stuck this in my mouth, because only Andrew loves me. You guys, I mean, you like me a lot, but not like Andrew loves me. Andrew will put this straw in his mouth because we're in, we have an intimate relationship. <laughs> I, I mean, I would drink from it. I drink from it.
apparently Andrew doesn't love me as much as I thought he loved me. Um, but back then when you ate and drank with somebody, it was extremely intimate. And the Pharisees saw that and like, you know what, you're, you're having this, this very intimate moment with sinners. Why is it that you're doing that? And then Jesus gave his famous uh, rebuke of them. He said, it's not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the healthy, but the sick. Are, is there any such thing as a healthy person? No. But there's people who think what? They're, what's the big word? Oh, poop doesn't stink. So Jesus did that. Well, that kind of, they didn't understand why he was doing that. And we're going to pick up from there. We're going to pick up from there because you'd think that the Pharisees, that would be a great rebuke, but it wasn't. So they were in 533. Uh, they, the Pharisees, said to him, Jesus, now, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours, yours, they just go on eating and drinking. Let's stop right there. Let me, let me make a quick comment kind of before I kind of unpack that text. Self-righteous people look for other self-righteous people. Do you know that? I was doing a wedding one time, and I, it was at a different church. And uh, I, I, I knew the, the children when they were about yay big, and big, and they had grown up, and um, they had gotten married, and they called me over to the church, and, and I was going to perform the services. And I got there, and I met with everybody. I met with uh, uh, the groomsmen. We had been meeting, you know, doing some sessions, and, and met with the, the mother of the bride and the father of the bride, and and uh, got everybody set up that day. And then the, I think it was a piano player who was a member of that church. She came up to me and she said, can I have a moment with you? I suppose. And she took me over to the side and she said, did you know that these, uh, these two people have been, well, They've been doing stuff that isn't very Christian. I was like, like what, gossiping? <laughs> oh, you don't think I did? I did. She said, no, 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 no. Oh, let me tell you. And then she gave me a list of the things that she thinks that these people were doing. And she started talking, and I think it was about 30 seconds before I, I get a little uncomfortable with that. So I'm like, you know what, I really don't have time with this today. You got, kind of got to do this wedding and, and everything like that. And I walked away, and I kid you not, they came out of the room, and when she saw them, she was just as nice as pie. But every single time during that whole evening, every time that I would get alone with this woman whose poop did not stink, she would try to tell me of all the bad things that this couple was doing all the time. And how they just don't want to come to this church anymore. The nerve of them. I was like, lady, I'm not like you. So self-righteous people like to, to find people like them. I think that's what kind of what the Pharisees were doing. They're like, you know what? Our disciples, they don't do this. They, they don't eat with the sinners. They don't drink with the sinners. In fact, what they do is they're fasting. They're doing the good stuff. So they were just kind of looking for somebody right there. And they just did not get that. Um, why aren't you praying? Why aren't the disciples praying? Did Jesus pray? He did. He prayed all the time. Did he pray in public? Yes, he prayed in public. Did he pr More often than not, he prayed when? No one was looking. Did he fast? He probably fasted more than any human being alive. He fasted straight for how many days? 40 days and 40 nights. But he didn't fast like self-righteous people fasted. He did not pray like self-righteous people pray. 
I had a guy come up to me one time, and this was, I don't even remember if it was this church, and he was new to Christianity, and I said, here's what I'm going to do. I said, I said, we're going to go ahead and pray, and I, what I want you to do is I want you to pray for this specific thing. And he, he, he just got ghost white, because we had a lot of people there that day. He said, you want me to pray in front of all these people? I said, yeah, I want you to pray in front of all these people. He says, well, what if I look stupid? I said, well, you're going to look stupid. I mean, you're praying to the, the omniscient God of this universe. I mean, he knows everything. He knows how many hairs is on your head. He created things in there. You're going to talk to God, and I don't care what big words you use. I don't care how, how eloquently you articulate it. You're going to sound stupid to him. Well, you'll probably sound more like a child. I know that li little Isabella, she's next door. She tries to talk to me. She, I asked her a question the other day. She goes, me don't know. I was like, how dare you? talk to me like that. It's I don't know. No, I understand. I say, that's so cute. But it's I don't know. We talk to God, we don't sound, we sound like little kids to him, don't we? But he loves us. I said, let me, let, let, let me just take a stab at this. You're scared of what people might think of you, aren't you? He goes, yeah. I said, don't worry, you're not talking to them anyway. You're really not. See, sometimes, self, and I don't think this person was self-righteous, he's just kind of new to the faith. And that's what self-righteous do. Sometimes a self-righteous person is going to pray in such a way where they use these big, long words, and, and they do it so, and they use their, their voice to articulate. And, 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 and what they're doing is, even though they, are, they, they, they say they're praying to God, what they're really trying to do is get the approval of who? Man, you know what Jesus said about that? You receive your reward when you do that. You receive your reward. And sometimes people fast that way. Sometimes people fast so that, they, that, they, that everyone else is going to think so highly of them. They will walk in, and it will have been three hours since they started fasting. And they will fall. So weak from their lack of food. And they will tell you, I haven't eaten since last night at night. <laughs> Jesus says people like that, they get the reward. He said, but when you fast, you don't even, you really, you don't put a little bit of oil on your face. Keep this between you and God. It's not that you can't publicly fast. In the Old Testament, we know that there is public fast. There's nothing wrong with public fast. But what Jesus was about was not getting the approval of man. And if, if we were looking for a definition of self-righteousness, I would say it's really trying to seek the approval of other people. Prayer is intimacy with God. His disciples, Jesus' disciples, who was asked, Jesus, why don't your disciples pray, actually asked Jesus about praying. He said, Jesus, how do we pray? How do we pray? And he said, here's how you pray. Here's how you pray. It's like you crawl up in your father's lap. Happy Father's Day, man. And you look up and you say, Daddy. You call the God of this universe Daddy. Because you're not just talking to God. You're talking to your father. It's intimate. And when you fast, I'm going to talk a lot about fasting here. We're Baptists. We eat. Everything you do, you do for the glory of God. Uh, eat me a cheeseburger for the glory of God. I ask him to make a miracle out of it. Jesus blesses food to my body. He doesn't. <laughs> it's a blessing, but... And a curse. Why would you fast? No. Seriously, though, you got that on recording? About 10 years from now, let's play that for him and ask him, what were you saying? I know, he's probably... He's talking in tongues. That's a deacon grandkid, too. My goodness. Why would you fast? Let me tell you one of the reasons that people fast. You know, this Bible stuff. Have you ever felt like God was distant? You 
felt like the world was just going to crud. And nothing that she could do is just like God was 10,000 miles away. Every time you just, you opened up your eyes, you felt so lonely. And you wanted him to come back. But people would do fast. And they would go without substance. And it would be kind of like this baptism was. It, it, it was more of an illustration of what was going on in their life. It would be an illustration of what was going on with you spiritually. It was this. It was saying, as my body longs for food, as my body needs this substance, so Lord, I need you. And the Pharisees asked Jesus, they said, why don't you fast? Did you see what Jesus said? Jesus answered this. He said, can you make the guest of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In, these, in those days, he will fast. A self-righteous person will fast so that they get the approval of men. They will look the part. They will announce to the world. They'll put it on Facebook. I'm fasting. They'll get 12 likes. Maybe 14. A couple comments. What's a fast? The godly fast when they want God to move in their life. And by the way, if you feel as if God is absent, I would encourage a fast. I don't think he is absent. We could talk about that at a later day. But I would encourage you a fast. But Jesus' response, and I think the Pharisees missed this one. Jesus said, remember, you would long for God to be with you. Why would they fast when the groom is with them? That's a statement of deity, if you know the Old Testament. Israel was the bride. Why would the God's chosen people choose to fast, to long for God, when Emmanuel, God is with them? That's a pretty powerful statement. He said, but the time will come when he will be taken from them. And if you look up the word and you look up the, actual, the, 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 the way it's articulated, it is the time is coming when the groom is going to be violently ripped from them. That is, he is going to be pulled from them by the self-righteous. He's going to be nailed to the cross and he's going to die. They'll fast then because they'll want God to move in their life. But until then, this is a celebration. Why is it a celebration? Because the people I'm around, they know they're bad. The people I'm around, they know they're sinners. The people I'm around have no defense whatsoever for their actions. And Emmanuel, God is with them. Why? Because that is grace. And the Pharisees didn't understand it. They didn't understand it. The self-righteous did not understand grace, did not understand God with them. Emmanuel didn't understand one of his people sitting with them. And that will bring me to my second point. And this is a real quick point. Because the self-righteous does not understand grace, remember we're looking at fruit, because they don't understand grace, they don't give grace. You cannot give that which you do not understand. And I want you all to be about self-examination today. Do you give grace? I got, I posted this uh, through uh, one of the, the stores in town. Um, that One of the ladies called me up and said, listen, we're going to do this thing. We're going to set up this big old box. We're going to set it up, and it's going to be a food drive. And on that sign, we're going to say, First Baptist, everything that you buy in this store, you put in this box, and it'll be food. This is not the food that we raise. This is a vacation Bible school. The kids brought all this. But I said, we're going to put that in there, and that food, food will go to help feed those who are hungry. So I put that picture up there on um, a social network site, and I had a guy comment and he's a he's a big wig in another church here in town and he asked me a question he got me on this one he said doesn't it say no where does it say he's trying to do the Nathan thing on me right trying to trick me he said where does it say that a person should work 
for what they get. I said, I believe that's in the Bible. Yeah. If a person will not work, they will not eat. Have I ever preached that text here? I have. Do I believe that's to be true? Yeah. But you know what else the preacher says in the Bible? It says that if uh, you see a brother or a sister in need and you don't have compassion on them, how can the love of God be in you? It questions the very love of God in you that you don't give sometimes. Well, they don't deserve it. Well, dummy, that's grace. But you don't say it like that because that's not pastor-like. Is stupid in the Bible? It is. Thanks, John. No, I won't say that because it's on tape. I'm going to tell on Miss Hannah. Okay, you tell me which, which, which one was demonstrated. This, this high, worthy gentleman, different church. She's probably got a title too. Or Miss Hannah. No title, just Miss. We didn't give away those gifts yet, did we? You need to remind me. I think Miss Hannah and her mama was driving down Clinton like they normally do. Sarah at the wheel. Sarah wave. She had the music going. I fly away. Probably that one, huh? I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. I Stop sign so she can close her eyes. Fly away. There's all being holy. They saw a homeless guy. You didn't look. When you drove by him the first time, did you look at him? Or did you do the whole? That would have probably been me. That would have been you? Yeah. You guys drove past him, though, right? I didn't see him. You didn't even see him because you was looking the other way because you was singing. <laughs> you got to your destination, and Hannah said, what? I don't know. <laughs> Pastor Mike? <laughs> you seen him? He's on a diet. Give him a cracker. But you got the food, and you went back to this homeless guy, and not only did you give him the food, but you talked with him. You, remember that one sermon? You touched his life. Who was the one who demonstrated behavior more consistent with Jesus? The gentleman who chided me, saying, let those who are hungry work for what they get. Or Hannah, going, did he deserve to be homeless, Hannah? You can't answer that question. Did he do something that made it so that he was in that position? You can't answer that question. That's not your place to judge. I submit to you, Hannah was more consistent with the teachings of Jesus Christ when she gave. See, Hannah understands something that I would, I don't know, this gentleman, I would really, I'd wonder out loud. Hannah knows what grace is because she demonstrates it in her own behavior. Which brings me to the third point. The self-righteous don't understand grace. The self-righteous doesn't give grace because the self-righteous has never received grace. Don't get too sad because the self-righteous does not want grace. We'll get to that in a, in, into a point. Let me read this text for you real quick. This is Luke 5, 36 through 39, and it says this. He said, he told them, this is Jesus' this parable. He said, no one tears a patch from a new garment and sews it on an old one. If he does, he will have torn the new garment. And the patch from the new will not match the old. And the one, the one pours new wine into the old wine skin. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out all over the wine skin. It will be ruined. No, the new wine must be poured into the new wine skin. And the one, watch this, after drinking old wine, wants the, or said, and no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for he says the old is better. I've got to unpack this real quick. Let me, let me just say, I probably the first hundred times I read that, I, 
I don't know why. Maybe I didn't unpack the package, um, the, the text as much as I should have. But I, I automatically jumped to the assumption that the old was the Old Testament and that the new was the New Testament. That's not what's happening here. That's not what's happening here. The Old Testament and the New Testament, and let me talk to you, maybe if you're new to the faith real quick, are not two different things. The Old Testament is not uh, Dr. Pepper Cherry, okay? And the New Testament is Diet Cola. Okay, that's not how it works. There is an old covenant. There is a new covenant. The, the new covenant is better than the old, but it's not two different things. You don't have angry, mean God and nice, um, improved diet God. That's not how it works. Here's how, here's how that works. The Old Testament is like a cup. The New Testament, Jesus says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. No, but I have come to what? Fulfill them. I can drink this. It's diet. Not with that straw, though. That's actually Randy's straw. If you would have put your mouth on that, that would have been real. Because, I mean, it's one thing. What is the old? The old is this, man trying to earn their way into heaven. The old is this, self-righteousness. The old is me thinking that I'm okay. Jesus says you can't do that. He said, you know what wineskin is? Okay. This is going to be wineskin. What they do, this is actually a paper bag. We're pretending. You would put grape juice in the wineskin. And what it would do is it would, what's that fancy word, ferment? And when it ferment, it would push the bag out as far as possible, okay, the, the skin, okay? Later on, when you drank all the, the wine or poured it out or whatever you did, if you were to put new wine in here, the skin was already what? Stretched out. So it would... Those of you who were sleeping, <laughs> I knew that was coming, and I have been looking forward to that. That is grace, giving you something you did not deserve, but I gave it to you anyway. <laughs> it would pop. You show me a church that is godly, and you bring in individuals who are self-righteous, that church will fall apart. You know why? Because self-righteous people identify pe some people as their poop stinks. You know what? They don't want to hang around them. Those people who are godly, they know that we're a bunch of bozos. We know we're bad. We know we don't have any defense. We actually want people who are bad to come in. Why? Because we know Jesus can change them. We know that Jesus could save them. But you get those two together, they'll fight all the time. One group will want to talk bad about an, another group, and the other group will just be like, we don't do that here. The bag will burst. But did you see what Jesus said? Verse 39. He said, no one after drinking the old wine wants the new. For he says, the old is better. I've come to conclude this. Now, I believe, now I, I believe that I was a self-righteous person before I came to Jesus Christ. I know that Jesus can change anybody. I know that Jesus can drop any person to their knee. I know that Jesus can convict anybody. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts the soul. And I don't care how proud and arrogant you are, Jesus can knock you on your knees. But I also know dealing with sometimes self-righteous people whose poop doesn't stink. Excuse the, the terminology... They really do not want grace. What they want to do is stand before God on their own merits. 
because they think they're good enough. And here's the sad thing. They will be before God, and they will be judged by their own merits. But they will not stand. Every knee will bow. Those of you who are godly, the sheep, in love you will take a knee. The self-righteous will take a knee because they don't see the lamb who was slaughtered, but they see the lion of Judah, and they will take a knee because they are afraid, because they will be judged, because, come to find out, their poop does stink. I'm going to close with this. It's really a question of self-reflection. Which would you prefer, old wine or new? Now, as is my understanding, if you take a bunch of juice, a grape juice, and you put it in place, and you let it get old, what does it do? It ferments, it turns to what? Alcohol. And as is my understanding, if you drink enough of this, you'll tend to think better of yourself than you ought to, right? You may be Superman. You tend to look at other people different too, don't you? At least differently. The old wine is probably easier. New wine's a little bit harder. Because what it does is just refresh you. Because it's grace. Now here's the hard part about receiving grace. You're really expected to also demonstrate it with others. See, if you understand grace, you really got to be showing it. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for, um, for your son, Jesus Christ, who, while we were yet sinners, deserving punishment, separation from God for all of eternity, we didn't deserve a seat at the table. We deserved to be thrown out the, thrown out the mansion where there is gnashing of teeth, crying and wailing. Yet you went in this world. You found a bunch of sinners. You found a bunch of people who didn't deserve anything but your wrath. And you invited them in to have a seat at the table. Grace. Amazing grace. Father, there are people trying to get into that mansion on their own merits. Not one of them is worthy. I pray if such a person is in this room, you break their heart. You show them that they are so far off of God's standards that they deserve what it says in the world to literally burn in eternity for, to burn in hell for all of eternity, to be separated from you. And that they have no other option. Stand in front of God on their own merits or to accept the grace. I pray they choose the latter. Father, bless this time as we do a time of invitation. Bring us together as we sing one last wonderful song celebrating what you've done for us. It's in the precious blood we pray. Amen. Amen.